Okay, welcome back to the channel. Um, today you join me in tying the Duracell Jig Nymph. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think this pattern is much of an introduction. Um, it's an amazing fly, an amazing pattern. Um, to be honest with you, there's not a time where I don't have one of these flies on my cast um, during the grayling season. Um, works brilliantly during a coloured river after flood. Um, and also works just as well when the rivers are running nice and clear. Um, this particular pattern that I'll be tying today is in a, a size 12 um, with a 4mm tungsten bead. Lost a few of these last weekend, um, so these are just being topped up for my box. Um, and that this particular size was obviously on the point fly of a, a Euro um, long line nymphing. Um, so let's get to it. We'll start with the thread. We'll catch the thread in just behind the bead. Run it down rearward to the bend of the hook, like so. Okay. Trim and remove our waist. Okay. Just like in my last video, I'll always give it a slight anti-clockwise turn just to help that first wrap of the thread um, to catch in the tail. So for the tail, we'll be using some Coq de Leon fibres. Um, again, six to eight fibres. Um, you don't want too many, you don't want too, too much of a bulk in the, in the tail itself. So again, draw the fibres back. We're looking roughly the length of the, the hook. So on top with two loose turns, make sure that we're happy with everything. Make sure we're happy with that length. Which I am on that one. So we'll add another turn, kick one in rearward, and then I like to pinch a loop to take it straight back up to the top there. Okay. We can look to remove that waist. Okay. Next, we're going to add in our rib, which is a, a UTC um, ultra wire in red. Again, that just slots into that slot on the bead. And again, we're going to secure that in with touching turns, <clears throat> working our way back down to the bend of the hook, like so. Okay. Now, the body um, is created with a a blend of dubbing from Hairline, which is the Ice Dub UV in brown. Um, now, obviously, looking at the pattern, you'll you'll notice it's not very brown in shade. It's more of a purple. Um, but one thing with this dubbing is it is quite a coarse dubbing, if you can see that. Um, so it doesn't dub the easiest. So my little trick is, first of all, less is more. Okay. And secondly, I'll always just catching that first section okay don't worry too much about creating a nice long dubbing noodle because you won't need it okay so get that first bit caught in we'll get it going with a, a couple of turns okay and then once those fibers are caught in it makes it much easier to pull some of those fibers down and rearwards to help create that gentle tapered body okay and like i say remember less is more so we can always add a little bit more as we need it. Um, and again, it is quite a, a buggy fly. So if you've got a few wayward fibres, it's not too much of a, a worry. And again, you can remove some of those if you want. So I'm fairly happy with that. So next we're going to rib our fly. So again, we always rib in the opposite way to the, the way that we round the body on. Open turn so one two three in front one two three behind and that will make it much easier to bend and break that wire now we move on to the hackle of the fly um, and the hackle is a cdc now there's many ways that you can have add this hackle um, you can obviously look at splitting your thread um, using a dubbing loop um, and obviously some kind of a cdc clip for me um, I found it just as effective um, and much quicker to tie if I actually tie the whole feather as a hackle. Okay. Now, when selecting a feather, draw the fibres out of the half done there. And if you offer them up at the front, you don't want to be looking at some of the longer fibres because we're only going to add a turn. 
cut some of the middle fibers you want them to be towards the end of the body and at an absolute max the end of the actual tail itself and that feather fits that bill so get the tip of the feather again we'll catch it in two turns fold it over just to help catch it in uh, we'll find where the tag is and we'll just remove some of that waste there like I say we're only going to add a single turn of this okay we don't want too much of a hackle but we obviously want to add just that little bit of movement so straight the fibers back and one full turn to where we caught it in right about there so we'll secure that with one turn two turns and a third in front okay now when we trim this off we want to bring our scissors in nice and close to the base of the stem of the, the, the feather Put that away and then we could draw these fibers back okay i'll just put a few turns in just to help kick them back so if you look at that now you'll see the longest fibers are coming level with the tail the final section to complete the fly um, is just to add a a collar to the to the dressing okay which is again the same dubbing that we've created the body with the uv brown so we don't again we don't want to create too much just a little bit okay fairly happy with that so what's left now is just obviously finish the fly off whip finish so a little bit of varnish to the thread again i find it easy to add it to the thread rather than once i finish whip finishing um, and we'll go for a five turn whip finish so one two three four and five and we pulled that through, use our now and just make sure that it's all cinched down nicely, which it is. Remove our thread. And there we have it, the Duracell Jig Nymph. A must-have pattern for any grayling fisherman or woman, should I say. Um, uh, a great attractor pattern, um, like I say, works just as well in coloured water as it does when the rivers are running nice and clear, which at the moment they're not. But the fly you must try, so give them a try, get it tied up, and let me know how you get on with it.